Welcome to the home of 100 to 1 Faith TV, the place for stories of amazing faith overcoming impossible odds. I'm Larry Gent, and this is the message for June 12th, 2022, at Grace Hartwood United Methodist Church. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Please join me in the opening prayer. Lord, you sent your word to become flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Fill us with that spirit today, until all the world beholds your glory. Amen. Our reading is from Psalm 29. Worship the Lord in the glory of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. And in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Our Old Testament reading is from Exodus 40. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the Israelites during all their travels. Our text today is from Acts chapter 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. One of my favorite storytellers is a guy named Henry Cho. His family is Korean, but Henry was born in Knoxville, Tennessee. So he sounds a lot like Gomer Pyle. Henry married his college sweetheart, a girl from Arab, Alabama. The name of the town was supposed to be Arad with a D, but the guys who put up the sign spelled it wrong. 
So they just changed the name of the town. <laughs> That's absolutely true. I, I looked it up. Henry said the town of Arab is all white people all the time, except for the week they got married. That week, Arab Alabama was suddenly half Korean. He said the first thing he did was he took his whole family to Walmart, just walking around, smiling, nodding their heads. When people would stop and stare at them, he'd say, what are y'all looking at? We just bought this place. <laughs> as amazed as the folks in Arab were that day, that had to be nothing compared to the day when Jesus ascended to heaven and took his place at the right hand of God. Another one of my favorite storytellers is this guy named Luke. I like his gospel and his sequel volume, The Book of Acts, but I actually think he missed his calling. He should have been writing Broadway musicals. All through his books, Luke tells us about people getting filled with the Holy Spirit and then they burst into song, just like a Broadway musical. But in the midst of all that inspired singing, one thing Luke makes abundantly clear is that Jesus was not resurrected in some vague, spooky, spiritual way. This was a very real, living, breathing human being. The scene we read today opens with Jesus at a covered dish supper, so we know Jesus was a Methodist. And he's eating lunch with his friends. I wonder if Jesus was first in line, or if he hung back so he could get the leftovers. Did he start with the chicken or go straight for the dessert table? But Luke doesn't tell us any of that. What he does say is that Jesus promises the Holy Spirit will come and will teach them all things and lead them into all truth. The other thing Luke makes very clear is that these people really needed that. Even after three years of teaching, even after all the miracles, even after his suffering, death, and resurrection, they still wanted to talk to Jesus about politics. So Lord, what's next? Are we going to take over the government? Are we going to take over the world now? It would have been reasonable for Jesus to say, what part of my kingdom is not of this world do you not understand? But he already knew the answer. They didn't understand any of it. Not yet. They didn't understand what was going on when a mighty cloud of glory came upon him. Even though from the Old Testament times, that cloud of glory signified the presence of the Holy Spirit. The glory of God enveloped him as gravity lost its grip and Jesus rose from this world into the next. They didn't know what to think. They just stood there slack-jawed and goggle-eyed. Maybe they had a Gomer Pyle moment of their own. Somebody must have said, golly, now there's something you don't see every day. But those angels had to be even more amazed when Jesus came walking into heaven. Remember, Jesus was really one of us. He just finished lunch, and there he was walking on the streets of glory. There was a genuine human being seated on the throne beside God Almighty. One of us is seated above the angels and archangels. One of us is pleading for us in the presence of God. The legal term for that role is advocate. One of us is constantly praying straight to God, the eternal judge, and advocating for us. Oh, and that name, advocate, 
That's another name for the Holy Spirit as well. Bear with me for a moment as I stray off into some Trinitarian theology. Just stay with me now. This won't hurt a bit. God the Spirit eternally glorifies God the Father and eternally reveals God the Son. God the Father eternally creates all things and God the Son eternally redeems all things. God has been the Father eternally. So the Son also has to be eternal, no Son, no Father, creating, begetting, revealing, redeeming eternally. So the Holy Trinity is actually a verb, eternally in motion. And we see this God verb in action from the first page of Genesis to the final words of Revelation. Once in Bethlehem of Judea, God the Son came down to redeem us. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ came down on every single page of Scripture. Christ still comes down to us every day, eternally. And by the power of the Spirit, Christ also ascends to heaven every day, eternally. Christ came down to bring God to us. Christ ascends to bring us to God. Constantly in motion, constantly redeeming, constantly advocating, constantly revealing. God has set this eternal motion in our world because God knows that we, like those first disciples, still need a lot of help. As a pastor, let me be honest here. I've noticed that sometimes some followers of Jesus are a little dense. Here, of course, I'm not talking about you. You and I, we've got it all figured out. I'm talking about the rest of them, certainly not us. <laughs> well, truth is, preachers are kind of dense too, and God knows that you and I both need a lot of help. Maybe not as much help as some of the rest of them, but we all need a lot of help. God knows all this Trinitarian theology and even trying to understand the ascension of Jesus. Well, it's kind of enough to make our heads swim. Dense disciples like us cry out, Lord, can you break it down and keep it simple for us? Thank God that the Spirit inspired a master storyteller named Luke to do just that. It's all spelled out for you in Acts chapter 1. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Yes, Christ will come for a final time. For as surely as time had a beginning, it will have an end. But until that time, Christ will continue to come every day, today and every day, eternally. Born to us by the Holy Spirit, rising up to heaven on our behalf, coming again and again just as he left. That's about all the theology you need to know. But remember, God is a verb, and God wants you to take that theology and put it into action. Fortunately, Jesus broke that down for us too. He said, just love God with all you got and show it by the way you love your neighbor. Simple, right? Well, it may be simple, but it's not easy. God knows it's not easy. That's why God has sent you an advocate, filling you with the Holy Spirit until your life shines with the love of Jesus Christ and with St. Paul you can say, 
not I, but Christ who lives in me, Christ who comes down to redeem me, Christ who ascends to carry my burdens to heaven, Christ who loves me and empowers me eternally. <laughs>